worked is I worked, worked out what it means. Oh, yeah. And I thought, all oh, right, so, and I, where the, the scripture's actually from, uh -huh. it's... And in fact, then, of course, I realised, in fact, it's written in English above it what it means. Oh, does it? <laughs> yes. The Lord knoweth them that the, are his. The, the Lord knows those who are his own. It was, it's what it the means. Lord knows those who are his own. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And so beneath, this uh -huh. is the, my favourite bit. Go on. Is St. Paul dreaming of the man of Macedonia. Is that the blue figure in the dream the there? The blue dreamlike figure. Is yeah. imploring him, you see. Yeah. And if you read uh, what it says, it says that the man in his dream was imploring him to come over. So he was implored. This is how God guided Paul over through mm -hmm. this man in the dream was saying, come over and help us, is actually what he was saying. Yeah. And this is how the gospel came to Europe. St. Paul's. St. Paul brought the gospel to Europe after hearing the man in the dream, yeah, the man of Macedonia. Amazing. Macedonian like Alexander the Great. Yes. So Paul was in what was then called Asia Minor, which is now Turkey, and he came over to Europe. Wow. And then, of course, there is Christ as the Good Shepherd. Yeah. In a way, it's rather preposterous because it's actual sheep. I yeah. Mean, Christ as Good Shepherd is really with people. Yes. But anyway, of course, it but says in much. the olden days, it helps people understand. They don't. It, yeah. It's it's part of the yeah. imagery, isn't it? Yeah. My sheep know my voice. It says. My sheep hear my voice. Yeah. Above his head. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hear my voice. Then above, right at the top, it's holy, holy, holy. Oh yeah, I see the three holies. Extraordinary. It's stunning. Uh, stained stunning. glass, isn't then it? Then beneath here, under the extraordinary lion. Uh huh. There is Christ. Uh, and this is the scene at uh, the end of John's Gospel mm -hmm. where Peter, who is the apostle he's with, uh, kissing his hand, Peter is being restored. Peter had denied Christ three times, mm -hmm. and now Christ asks him three times, Peter, do you love me? He asks him three times. Yes. And he's restored that way. Mm -hmm. Peter says, of course, Lord, you know I love you. Yeah. The one who's just behind him is the Apostle John. Because in the... In, in the, the red. In yeah. the red. And Peter and John have a rivalry, which we detect, particularly in John's Gospel. Mm -hmm. And Peter says, what about him? And basically Jesus says, um, what's, that, what's that for you to worry about? Yeah. You need to worry about that. Yeah, why are you worrying about these silly yeah, things? Yeah, why, why are you worrying about the other person? Just think yeah. about yourself. Mm -hmm. But this is the scene at the Sea Gallery, the breakfast at the beach. And of course, he says to Peter, feed my sheep. Yeah. And there is an actual lamb. And he also says feed, feed, he says, feed my sheep and feed my lambs. Mm -hmm. And there are two lambs there. Beautiful. It's an amazing uh, thing, really. No, really, really good. Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate the, mm. the personalized uh, explanation. Well, this broadcast comes to you from the decaying carcass of the 20th century. It literally had a 20-year hiatus because uh, on September the 11th, 2001, uh, some, uh, some rather large world-changing events happened involving planes, trains, automobiles, the CIA, the Pentagon. What was it? Flight Ni United 93? Woo! Haven't thought about that for a while. Uh, one tower, second tower, a third tower. So what I think we're seeing now in 2021 with this whole build back better, reset, the great reset. They shouldn't call it that because of Chairman Mao's great leap forward where 60 million people starved to death because they, um, <laughs> they thought sparrow birds are eating all the grain. So we're going to bang our drums and pots and pans until every sparrow dies of exhaustion. And then without the sparrows eating the grain, the locusts and the insects came in and ate all the grain. So uh, Mao Zedong, uh, really good, um, you know, if you want to take over a country uh, in a menacing way and become dictator, he was good at that. Not so good with his uh, social policies. There was another thing they tried to do. They told all the people from across the countryside in China to uh, bring all their iron into these like homemade furnaces, smelting furnaces. And they made the most low quality iron shit. 
I don't know how serious he was, or if he, if he was smoking crack, thinking that that was a good idea, I don't know. Or maybe it was his plan to uh, get rid of a lot of peasants already, you never know. He's like, well, if we get rid of half the population, uh, our food quota needs to only be 50%. Forgive the Chinese tangent there. We're in the, we're in the Great Reset now, and had the 20-year hiatus exactly 20 years ago, almost to the month. And uh, something gave me a great... I need to hold it with two hands, because when I'm filming in 4K at 60, the, uh, the stabilization isn't so good. So something gave me great optimism, happiness, and peace yesterday. And no, it wasn't my trip through Piccadilly Gardens, although I did thoroughly enjoy being in the flow, in the Zazen. A man who has lost everything and uh, who cannot move forward except through his enemies will fuck up his enemies. But yesterday I read something and I was like, I better verify the source. So I went onto the government website here in the UK, went onto the National Health Service website here in the UK. And get this, guys. You know all these COVID passes, COVID passports, travel green card, COVID certificates that you need to travel, to enter a nightclub, to attend lectures at university? Well, just like the face mask, the government's released a massive statement saying that some people are exempt from vaccination, they're exempt from carrying any proof of vaccination, exempt from taking a test, and it outlines in black and white, in no uncertain terms, guidance, the law to nightclub owners, airline staff, venues, concerts, saying to comply with the Equalities Act of 2010, which was very, you know, big legislation brought into this country 11 years ago. If someone states, a member of the public states that they are exempt from the COVID passport, exempt from the vaccine or exempt, just exempt generally, you cannot ask them to provide proof. You have to allow them into your venue. I'll try and post this on my stories, but just look up NHS COVID pass exemptions and you'll find it from the direct source. And so... The eureka moment was realizing that governments around the world did get very scared about the, the virus. We live in a litigation culture. Everyone's got a lawyer. Everyone's got a no win, no fee lawyer. Everyone's taking everyone to court. And the government was just covering its ass. Do you guys remember all those £10,000 fines for organizing an illegal gathering during the protest? Sorry, during the lockdowns? Do you remember the £200 fines given for not wearing a face mask in the store? Well, they, they've all been quietly slept under the rug, like super quietly, hush, hush, hush. Nobody's paid anything. Nobody's going to pay anything because none of it was legal. Now, as the, um, as the Upanishads tell us, the stories of uh, the ancient Hindus, Life is a theater, and life in a time of crisis is even more of a dramatic theater. So we all fell under the illusion that the government actually had um, authority and power to change the world overnight, but they didn't. But they gave the illusion that they could, and they went along with it, and people went along with it. And I think the British government, I can't speak for other governments around the world because I'm not as familiar, the British government were a bit shocked with how quickly people complied with the stay at home, don't go out, get your one hour of exercise a day and uh, wear your face mask in uh, enclosed areas. I was in the control group, the unofficial control group, didn't wear the masks, went out every single day, interacted with people every single day in the city center or otherwise, interacted with the police, still shaking hands, still kissing babies, still posing for photos with the mayor. And uh, I'm almost elated. I'm elated for two reasons. Yesterday was a, was a big turning point for my channel, for me, for my uh, trust in myself. I was tested and uh, I came out good. And um, yeah, man, I, I, I slept last night better than I've slept for, I think, over a year. A perfect eight hours, dreamless, waking up, 
wasn't you didn't even need to wake up to go for a pee in the middle of the night and then I, I find out that all this um, you know social credit system COVID passport you know show us your papers it's all theater it's all a dramatic turn of events in the time of crisis, in the time of war, the government will try and get consensus and solidarity and uh, community spirit. And all the people that complied to be positive about it, you showed your patriotism. Okay, you showed your obedience, but most of you believed, as I, as I did, that it was a really bad thing. That it was going to be like um, an outbreak or what was that film with Matt Damon and uh, what's it, what was it? Jesus, you know the recent um, pandemic film, the Matt Damon one, it was going to be like that. Contagion, I think it was called. Outbreak and Contagion. Scary as hell. And in a way, it was a really good test. If we do go to war against uh, the Chinese Communist Party, important to specify, not the Chinese people. Chinese people are amazing. They're just like anyone else. They want the same things. People are the same. Generally, not in terms of a uh, specific. People are generally the same. They want a happy life. They want their children to do better than they do. And they don't want to be humiliated. Now, every single human on earth can pretty much, unless you're crazy, you can say you want these things. I lost my train of thought. Usually I'm good at grabbing it. Oh yeah, I'm just happy. Happy, the drama. I just want to turn the camera around. You can see what's behind me. It's the uh, entrance. There's the old building there. Oh, sorry, with the finger in the lens. Old building there. And this innovation house built in the 90s, I think. That's where the Salford uh, Police and Crime Commissioner sits. He was elected with the lowest ever public turnout for an election. I think it was 12%. Let's turn the camera around. Over here, you see the relics of the 20th century. Some 1980s, early 90s design. Looks like some center parks uh, meeting room or some sort of like um, modernist version of a ski chalet with a sloping roof. I think I'm gonna pause it for a second now. Nine, nine minute rant, nine minute rant. Thanks for watching. Do you like my haircut? Do you like it? Do I look less bald? I know I don't. I'm in full, uh, full awareness of how it looks, but it's better than it was before.